Hi parents, today is Wednesday, September 9th, and this is our overview video for today's lesson. We started off with the tendons, and then we moved straight into our Your Turn practice book, and it is our wonders from our wonders series. And we are turning to page three. So I will go over what we did. We numbered the paragraphs, and this is really important. I've learned that even in third grade, we're struggling to figure out what an indent means um, and where the start of a new paragraph begins. So, oops, I'm jumping ahead of myself. First, we read our directions, and then I'll go over our paragraphs. So read the passage. We boxed read, and what are we reading the passage? Use the visualize strategy, is what we boxed, to help form pictures in your mind. So what I do when I read still to this day is I visualize exactly what I'm reading. If I don't know if the, the author didn't give me enough details for me to picture it in my mind, I picture it anyways, like I make something up. So for instance, I had the student close her eyes and I said, picture Sarah walking through a park. She smells beautiful flowers and she looks out and sees a huge lake with birds flying above. And then I had them open their eyes and we talked about what they saw. We all see something different because I didn't give perfect um, adjectives and didn't explain everything. So Sarah, I didn't talk about what she looked like. I thought of Sarah Hartwell from the story we read. Other people thought someone else. But the idea is you think of a person. Then I said the flowers smelled nice. I didn't say what type of flower. I pictured a sunflower. Other people, other students pictured roses, dandelions, other flowers. The lake I pictured, we were in a park. So my park was huge, like Central Park. It's a big lake, and I pictured white birds flying above. Other people's minds, when they visualize in their head, look different. But does it really matter whether we picture different flowers? No, it doesn't. It just helps us stay focused on our story as we read. That is a skill that has really helped me. So that is what we focused on when we read um, River Rescue. Then we talked about our paragraphs. Paragraphs are when you indent. So we practice with our emoji writing. We wrote a paragraph where you indent and just start my first day. And then you just keep writing, you keep writing, but you start right here. If I put was, right? This is indenting the space right here. That's where you know a new paragraph will begin. So we counted, we numbered every single paragraph. This helps us because when we talk about the story, if we say, when did the dog get sick? In paragraph four, it says the dog wasn't feeling well, right? So we need to number our paragraphs so we know what we're writing and when we explain our answers. I combine number nine. I put these both as a paragraph because they're only one or two sentences each. So I just made it a little easier. But usually they will be big paragraphs like on the back side. So we numbered these paragraphs as well. Okay. Then we read the story. I will, we popcorn read. So just so you know, hopefully we get to go into class again this year. But normally in class, I read the story and I'll pause. And the students just have to read the word I paused on. So I just know that we're all paying attention. And then I have them read with a partner and they read sentence by sentence. So every sentence they're switching with their partner. I never have students read out loud because I know that brings anxiety. And that is the one thing I never want to bring into the classroom. But since we are on virtually, it is very challenging and 
I'm frankly tired of hearing my voice. And I love hearing from the students and it's hard to hear their voices virtually. So we popcorn read and then we eventually just took volunteers. So eat, after each paragraph, a student would volunteer to read. So we did that the first time. And then the second time, because you always, ideally you want to read everything three times. But since we did not have that much time, we read it twice. The second time I read it. So make sure you read this at least twice. And then we went to page five. And we answered the questions. So here are the questions, if you want to pause. You just want to make sure you restate the question. We are always restating the question in our writing and when we are speaking. Okay, and we finished this all in class. Then we moved on to a brain pop on punctuation. We are still reviewing um, our sentences. So our command statements, exclamations, and our questions because it still seems like we're struggling on identifying the difference between our question and a statement and a command. So I'll put the link to the brain pop in the comment section. Then we pulled out week four and five third grade grammar. Some, it seems like there was a mistake, a beautiful oops when printing. But what I would like is to turn to page three. So you have to just find page three and it's really funky. So you may, you may miss it. And we did this sheet together. So if you missed it, I'll put it under here and you can pause. Okay. So pause if you were in class and you missed. I'll explain the directions. So there's a lot. Number one. We box right. That's the first command that we are told to do. We write each sentence correctly. Well, how do we do that? Using capital letters and end punctuation. Okay. But we need to figure out if it's a sentence to begin with. Is it a complete thought or is it a fragment? So if the group of words does not tell a complete thought, place an X next to it. So that's two. Then add words to make it a sentence and write it on the line. Then, that's what we did. Excuse me, I'm sorry. But just so you know, whenever you edit or proofread, three lines underneath a letter means you need to capitalize that letter. When you proofread, when you add punctuation, you circle the punctuation so it's easy to see. And then rewrite the sentence. So just we completed that. And then page four was our homework, is our homework. So it's a little different. You have to rewrite the sentence below, fixing any mistakes you might find. Well, there's a period already there. You need to decide, is that period correct or do you need a different ending punctuation? Is it a complete sentence? Does it have a capital letter? You need to ask yourself all these questions when you are doing one through five. We, the reading, our first activity took longer than expected. So yesterday we started restating the question. What they need to do for homework is to finish the bottom four of restating the question with their own answers. So it's about themselves. So where were they, where were you born? I would write, I was born in Bakersfield, California. Right? How many siblings do you have? I would write, I have one brother. Okay. Then from there, write notes, make sure I don't miss anything. Our restate packet, our race packet, I'm sorry, our race packet. So this is week four. We have two packets in that orange paper folder, but we are on week four. Yesterday, actually always, we started yesterday, we will now always restate the question in our writing and when we speak. 
Now we're focusing on answering the question completely. So we turn to race practice one. We read it twice. And the question is, how is Marcos feeling? So here's the answer. We restated the question. And then we went back and we, we answered the question, how is he feeling? Then we went back to the text to figure out how do we know he was feeling that way? What evidence proves that he was angry? And we underlined the evidence we found. We had our, we needed to write at least two, two um, pieces of evidence. That is what we did. Then we moved on to math. So your chapter one, page 15, we went over five and six. That was homework to go over it. And the students gave me their answers. And then I did number seven, excuse me. And then I set the timer uh, for a certain amount of time. And then they worked on eight, nine, 10, and they came back and told me their answers and how they solved it. So I am just going to explain one a reminder that it does not tell you what you're rounding to the tens or the hundreds. You choose. If you choose to round to the hundreds on our first number, you round the bottom number to the hundreds. Compatible numbers. I'm not teaching. It's extremely confusing. So we're just focusing on rounding. Okay. So number nine. I box the two because I'm gonna round to the hundreds. I point to the tens place, the six. I pretend that seven's not there. I ask myself, is six greater than or less than our magic number five? Five's always the number we compare to. That is our magic number. Six is greater than five, our magic number. Since six is greater than five, our box number goes up by one only. It's either gonna stay the same or go up by one. It's going to go up by one since six is greater than five. All the numbers to the right turn to a zero. So 267 rounds to 300. 517. I'm going to box the five, the hundreds place, because I boxed the hundreds place on our top number. I point to the one. I think to myself, is one greater than or less than our magic number five? It is less than our magic number. Since it is less, our box number stays the same. That's why it's just a five right here. Everything to the right turns to a zero. And then you add, because we're estimating sums. Sums means adding. Zero plus zero is zero. Zero plus zero is zero. Three plus five is eight. So our answer is 800. So we went over those. And then homework, you flip over one, is 16A. 16a in the checklist i wrote all the numbers but you are doing all of the even numbers on the front and everything on the back except for one and three number one is confusing because it's talking about compatible numbers so you might think, 727, why they put 725? Don't worry about it. Don't use that as an example. I want you just to round. Round your numbers and add your sums. So down here, I did go over number three. We use cubes. Cubes. So important with math word problems. Because like I said, I struggle or I used to struggle, because not anymore, because now I figured out a way that helped me, is we use cubes. This worksheet stays in your folder always. I figured out that you works better. Underlining the question first off is always better than the key numbers, because you need to know what the question's asking you before you know what numbers you're gonna be adding or subtracting, so, Number one is always underline the question. So first you need to read it. Matt biked 345 miles last month. This month he has biked 107 miles. Altogether, about how many miles 
has met by last month and this month. I talk about visualizing. I have a brother named Matt. So I'm picturing my brother riding a bike. I'm picturing him riding it in front of the ocean because I love the ocean. He's so tired. A month later, he goes back again and rides many more miles on the coast. And then I think to myself, hmm, about how many miles did he ride? Okay. So I underline the question all together about how many miles has Matt bike last month and this month. I have, that's my underline. Then I jump back up to C, circle the key numbers. We're talking about miles ran, biked. So here's miles, here's miles. So these two, I'm going to circle 345, 107. Then I jump to three, box any math verbs. These are action words. Now with math verbs, this is important. Math verbs are sometimes not normal verbs that we do in reading and language arts. Math verbs mean something else sometimes. We're gonna go over that tomorrow. So I just kind of told you our math verbs today. All together means add. So I boxed all together. Okay, I know I'm adding. About means round, round. So I know, okay, I'm not just adding my numbers, I'm rounding first. And also means add. And in a math problem, it will tell you the two. So we are, we are adding last month and this month, okay? If there's other numbers, it doesn't mean we add them all. We look at what, what is and in between, last month and this month. All right, so now I know E, I, that was my evaluate for E. What steps do I take? I talked it through. Now I'm gonna solve and check, make sure it makes sense. So that's what I did. I wrote 345 plus 107. I rounded first. I box my three, point to my four. Is four greater than five or less than five? Our magic number is five. It is less than our magic number, so our three stays the same. Everything to the right turns into a zero. 107, box the one because I boxed the three. Up here, I'm rounding to hundreds. I decided I want to round to hundreds. I point to the zero. Is zero less than five or greater than five? Five is our magic number. It's less, so our one is also gonna stay the same. Everything to the right turns to a zero. Zero plus zero is zero. Zero plus zero is zero. Three plus one is four. So 400 miles. I then need to write my statement. We will get better and better at this, but right now we can just write about because we, we don't have exact. We have about, we round it, about 400 miles. You need to write miles because what could it be? 400 what? 400 ice cream cones? You, so you need to write what you are looking for. Then you will finish the rest for homework. You will need to read for 30 minutes. We ha also have science, so work on science. And we have a rounding sheet that looks like a dog. So you are coloring it, but first you have to round. So keep working on that. That'll be due in a couple weeks, so do a few each day. All right, thank you so much.